Hey YouTube, today we're gonna to be doing a review and overview of how to use and what I think about the Bright Coffee Pipe that has been made famous by James Hoffman a few weeks back on one of his videos. You can see him using it out in the wilderness, but I wanted to do my review and talk about some of the things I like and I don't like about it, but I also wanna talk about how to use it in the home and how to use it while out doing adventures on what this thing is made for. First off, I just wanna say welcome to Kabeen's Coffee Corner. I appreciate you checking out this channel. This channel is designed to help you choose the coffee gear you wanna brew with and what you wanna purchase for coffee. So I do ask that you please like and subscribe to my channel. This really, really helps me continue to produce content for you as viewers to help you choose the coffee gear you wanna brew with. So let's go ahead and dive into it. This is the Bripe and this is all that it comes with. I got this shortly after James Hoffman's video before they sold out and was back ordered. So in this, it comes with this nice little felt pouch, which I was really, really surprised at the quality of it. It feels very durable and feels really nice. You got the Bripe itself, the stand, um, and a butane lighter. So I'm gonna just go ahead and throw this off to the side. So we got the Bripe, we have the stand, here we have a thermometer we have the filters which there's three different sizes of these filters and you can kind of see the size difference between them on when you hold it up to light but it is kind of difficult to see that we got the thermometer to tell you the degrees this holds coffee grounds so you can pre-ground your coffee for the places you go so you don't have to carry a grinder with you and this is the butane torch that it comes with which is like really sweet that it comes with this high powered of a torch. My problem with this though was it took me forever to find butane because it doesn't come with it and I don't smoke or do anything like that. So I didn't really know where to buy it or how to buy it or how to insert it and it took a lot of research on that. So first off, you do just fill it up with this small butane canister and you just put it right in the bottom of it and flip it upside down. You can find those at your local Walmart, but you do have to go to like the front and ask for customer service because it's usually kind of hidden in a back shelf. So for those of you who are trying to find it, that's where you find it. So let's just go st start off with how to brew with it. So you're gonna take about five grams of coffee, give or take, so that's not much coffee. You're gonna put it into your bright, and this is ground for a pour over, uh, V60 setting, Chemex setting, somewhere in there. This is pretty forgiving. I just totally messed this up. <laughs> We're gonna scratch that and I'm gonna pour that back into the tube there because there is one step that is critical for brewing with a bripe. This is a fun video. I'm not gonna edit this out. This is gonna be in there for everybody. Put your filter in first. I typically like to put it on the right side with the thermometer going up in this, this whole setting there. It doesn't really matter. It's still gonna brew coffee regardless. You want those one of those mesh filters to cover up the hole that you drink out of. You're then going to fill up your grounds and you kind of want it up to this top center part so this nub sits at the bottom in there just like so. So you're going to want to fill up your coffee grounds right to the top there. Shove your thermometer in the hole there. And you're going to take about 180 degrees of water. So this is how you do it in a home and I find this pretty works. You get your kettle out and you heat up a kettle with that. If not, you just pour cold water and I'm going to, there's a video of this of me going out on a bike brewing this exactly how it's meant to be. So you're just gonna hold that up with the lighter and heat it up to 180 degrees as it says so on there or 185. But I'm gonna use a kettle to about where that stem kind of meets the top there. And you're just gonna give it a little stir. One thing that I do want to note is be careful as you pull out the thermometer that you don't pull up the mesh filter on the inside. And then you're just gonna give it a little stir, hitting the grounds at the bottom and you are gonna wait until it cools down to 140 degrees. Typically, it doesn't take a long time to heat up, but it all depends on the temperature. When I'm going out and biking, as you'll see later on in this video, it took a while for it to heat up because it was 50 degrees outside and the water that I started with was pretty cold because it was on my bike and just a regular bike bottle. So it does take a while to heat up based off of where you are. If you're doing it from standard room temperature water and you're doing it indoors, it takes like a minute to heat up and then it takes a while to cool down. If it's colder outside, it's gonna cool down quicker. If it's hotter, it's gonna take a while to cool down. So it just kind of depends, but every single time I've done this, I've had shockingly good results. Like I've never had a bad bripe, as you will, out of this 
uh, regardless of how I've brewed it and regardless of the temperature outside. And I've done it fairly regularly so far in the few weeks that I've owned it. And see just how easy that was to pull up that filter there. Rest assured, it's not the end of the world if you do. You don't get a ton of grounds in there. So what you're gonna do now is after you got your bright cooled down to the temperature, you're gonna blow once. You can also play around with the temperature of this a little bit. So when you feel comfortable drinking it based off of a certain temperature, go ahead and drink it. If you like it at 130, wait down until it's 130 or 140 is where they recommend, which is a pretty decent where it's it's hot, but it's not too hot. Now, I'm, I'm always surprised at the flavor of this. It reminds me if I had to compare it to something, probably like the concentrated Prismo shot, the Prismo and the AeroPress, if you've ever seen those combine and have pulled like a Fox shot with it. That is kind of what this tastes like. It's just kind of more strong coffee based. I wouldn't call it a shot of espresso. It doesn't do anything close to what my espresso machines that I've used like the Flare and the Robot. It doesn't even come close to that, but it does give a good coffee drink with good flavor in there. I found if you take one of those sugar packets that you can find at cafes and things like that and just simply put it in there too and mix that around, it also tastes pretty well. They also have different recipes and variants of that. Let me finish this and then I wanna to get to you my biggest con of the Bripe itself. I also have found this little base surprisingly helpful. However, this is completely unnecessary and you don't need it. You can simply hold the Bripe wherever you are so if you don't have any flat surfaces around you while you do it, you can heat it up like this and you can just chill and hold it in your hand while it cools down. So inside you got a fairly kind of wet grounds, but not like, well, I would say more damp than wet. They're not like runny, like a, a shot, like an espresso puck gone wrong and super watery like that. But it's a, a fairly dry-ish puck. The more you suck out of it, the more it'll be dry. So here comes my biggest con is you're outside, you brewed your bripe, what now? Where do you go with this? The problem that I've had with this bripe is the fact the cleanup is not easy when you're outdoors. Unless you put your grounds on the ground, which I, I'm not even gonna get into that debate whether you should or should not do that because it is biodegradable, but there's a lot of people who heavily believe that you should leave grounds completely untraced, that it shouldn't look like you've been there before. So you should pack in and pack out every single thing you brought. That being said, when you make a bripe like this and have the grounds, the best way to do it is simply slide out that filter, slide out the thermometer and just knock it on a trash can to knock it out, which you can find in public places and wash the inside out with like your bike water bottle or whatever water bottle that you have there to kind of get a clean view. However, I found most times that I use it, it's just too much of a pain in the butt to clean up that I don't want to clean it up. So the best solution I have for that is simply grab two of these Ziploc bags and you can reuse these as much as you want. And you simply take your Ziploc bag and you open it up and you take your bright and I'll maybe run cold water on the outside of the bright just to lower the temperature down of it. And I'm gonna take the bright and I'm gonna put it inside this Ziploc bag. Everything else I have in there and I'm gonna shove this part, the grounds holder, which is enough to make a couple, a couple bripes I would say back to back. Then I'm gonna shove these in at an opposite angle. So they're kind of like this. So I'm gonna shove one of those in first, which in this case, it's gonna be the bright first. Then I'm gonna shove this in at the angle to fit in, wrong angle there. And then I'm gonna take this base and put it in and collapse it all together in Bripe's little bag. The reason why I put the Bripe in a Ziploc bag is because I don't want any coffee grounds getting inside this bag. This bag is nice, um, but there's no water like resistant inside of it. so. I wouldn't wanna try and clean this because it's straight felt. So that's my big issue with the bike. So overall, I like the bike, it's convenient. It's nice to be able to go on a bike ride or hike or whatever you wanna do, or honestly even drink at home. It's kind of fun too when you use a kettle just to heat up the water, it makes it nice and quick. It does its job well. It's the best option that I found to have coffee on the go, unless, well coffee outside specifically doing hiking or biking or something like that. This is the best option that I found so far. I'm very thankful for James Hoffman in releasing this video to bring attention to this. It's better than traveling with an AeroPress in a jet boil to heat up water or do something like that. It's um, better in my opinion than driving or biking with a thermos full of hot coffee and then just drinking that where you're at because I just don't typically like coffee out of the thermos. I find this really quick and easy to brew with and assemble and disassemble and heat up and do everything you need to do wherever you're at. So that being said, at the price tag, at when I bought it, it was 49 
$59.99. It jumped up to $59.99 already, and who knows at the time of this making video and when you're watching this what the price will be. But at the price I paid for it, I have absolutely no regrets with it. I'm a very particular coffee drinker. I actually grounded these beans with Anish Zero, um, which is my primary grinder. I do a lot of espresso at home, things like that. And I was really, really happy with the coffee out of this. However, it wasn't by far like the best coffee I had in the world. But to say that I'm willing to drink it without sugar or without creamer or anything like that, and it's a pleasant taste, says a lot. Same with James Hoffman, who's probably well, who's definitely more um, particular than I am about my coffee, who was able to drink it out outdoors and enjoy it and have a good time with it. It's a fun, it's a fun little thing. It always surprises people when you drink out of a pipe looking thing, which is a fun novelty gift. But overall, this is something that I love putting on my bike and I love going with, going two places with it to see, just have a nice relaxing time in the middle of a long bike ride and you're out 25 miles and you have 25 miles back and you just wanna take a little break, have some coffee, this is a great way to do it. Way better than my AeroPress for bringing it places, way more convenient, way less of a package, easy to put away, easy to set up. Very, very happy with the bright. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. But let's go ahead and Let's move on a little bit. Let's take this out from the desk and out from the office and out from the studio. Let's go on a bike ride. Let's see what this thing can do. Let's see what this is. It's 50 degrees out, 53 degrees out. So let's see how this goes. Let's see if it's worth it. And remember, as you're watching this, if you find any of this beneficial, please like and subscribe. So let's go.
in case you're wondering about the gear that I use, I rode a Salsa Journeyman Apex build. It came in the color yellow. However, I got the 650B tire swapped out to 700C by 40 tires, so a really, really nice tire that I absolutely love for the pavement, the gravel, and the single track that I'm riding on it. I also used a Salsa Everything bag here. I think it's called the Everything bag, um, but I bought this on REI or something like that, and it fits the bright perfectly. On the inside here, you can just simply slide it in. I can fit a few more other things and simply just roll it up. Really, really nice bag, um, works great for it. I strapped it onto my front fork by using the wide, wide foot cage in some uh, Violi straps that they made. They're, I used the 21 inch ones to wrap around this bag to secure this on there. Wasn't concerned at all about taking it down any single track, any gravel or anything. I wasn't concerned at all about my bright. The wide foot cage works out really really nice it's small it's lightweight and i can leave it on my bike at any time for whenever i'm ready to bring my bike so it's just ready to bring my bike and it's just a simple strap it on and go and have some fun so thank you for watching i hope you found this video video helpful and please subscribe if you found it beneficial at all thanks for watching